Well, uh, buenos dias. Um, it's a uh, real honor and thrill to be here in uh, Havana, Cuba. Um, I'll have to present my, uh, do my presentation in English here. My Spanish isn't strong enough yet. Um, so for, uh, um, this is a talk about uh, BGP security, including some BGP hijacks and manipulations. Uh, but before I get into that, um, in the United States, I'm often associated with the, uh, oops, we got a, uh, <laughs> perfect timing. All right, well, I'll talk while this is going. Um, uh, I get associated with the internet in Cuba. Oh, thanks. Good. This is about three years ago, a little more. Um, I spotted the, uh, the Alba 1 submarine cable uh, come active. Um, I had learned about this story of the cable being constructed, and, uh, and then there was some uh, uh, question as to, or there was a lot of people, there was intense interest, let's put it that way, and uh, what was the fate of this uh, submarine cable. So I set something up in one of our tools uh, you know, the minute that cable came active, I wanted to uh, get notified, and about a year later it took uh, that I got an email, and I went and looked in, and it turned out that the, uh, the cable was active. So it's a great milestone for the development of the internet in Cuba, and uh, you know, now we are all using um, a pretty good uh, internet service uh, in this conference, uh, at least um, uh, uh, taking advantage of the uh, this submarine cable connection to Venezuela. Uh, our webcast is going out over it. Um, so. Now, back on to the uh, uh, BGP. So this is a, an obligatory slide of just uh, some background for some folks who maybe don't know as much on, uh, uh, of what BGP is and um, maybe some of the terminology. So this is a single routing, uh, there's, a, there's a single route instance of a, it's a routing protocol that um, allows uh, information to be exchanged on how to route traffic between entities of the internet. Uh, so the entities are called autonomous systems. Uh, these can be universities, enterprises, uh, um, telecoms, ISPs, and that's essentially you've got about you know, 50,000 or more uh, that make up the internet that are exchanging traffic. Uh, each one advertises uh, uh, networks prefixes its, its address space to its uh, peers and transit providers, and then um, uh, each AS uh, independently. Uh, this is a distributed algorithm. Each uh, uh, AS independently picks its uh, best routes based off of uh, some metrics. Here's some examples here I gave. This is a slide from a talk from The Hague, uh, so I've got some Dutch examples here. Um, however, the weakness is the system is built on trust, and any AS at any time could announce address space belonging to someone else. It's uh, uh, common knowledge to those, those of us who are in this space. Um, and, uh, and this has happened. Uh, in fact, you know, so this is a, we have an underlying system dr uh, driving, uh, carrying traffic, uh, directing traffic uh, through the internet based on trust. That trust has been violated. And uh, here's an example, another one from uh, a couple of years back. I won't get into it because uh, I've got some new, uh, uh, new examples uh, to, to talk about today. But this was the one from uh, Belarus. Maybe you've seen this diagram where we saw uh, someone in there announcing address space out of uh, some U.S. financial institutions, some government uh, entities around the world. Uh, we were able to track the traffic uh, back through Belarus and, uh, and see uh, where it was, um, what was happening. This is an example of one of the uh, this, uh, hijacks of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania. And so on the uh, on the right-hand side, just below legitimate route, there is uh, an AS path, and bold is uh, AS24825. This is the uh, autonomous system of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Lithuania. That's the legitimate origin of, their, of this route. The hijack came, in, came out of uh, Belarus, and, uh, and so we had trace, we ran a lot of traces uh, automatically uh, around the internet, and um, we had one, uh, this is example, one that came from Helsinki to Lithuania, was redirected through Moscow and Minsk. Those hops are not normally uh, in the path. So that's a one way to verify uh, that you know, some traffic has been affected. On as far as uh, trace routes go, you know, we have uh, nowadays we have over 250 servers uh, running trace routes constantly uh, to all the uh, routed address space of the internet. Uh, we generate about 600 million trace routes a day, and so anytime there's some sort of an incident along these lines, we've got uh, uh, invariably we've got trace routes that get sucked into it, and it allows us to study uh, you know, what was uh, what cities providers were involved. Uh, how did how did uh, if, due to active measurement, uh, what can we what could we learn from that? Um, yeah, so the system has been uh, manipulated, and, um, and there's uh, uh, we put out over the years a, a handful of examples of this. Another area that we're uh, talking about more and more is this uh, idea of uh, fraudulent routing. This is uh, people, uh, entities, various entities announcing address space that isn't belong doesn't belong to them for various nefarious purposes. 
And so uh, this has long been a, a, a technique associated with spam generation, but it's also uh, been linked to things like malware and uh, botnet CNCs. Uh, the objective here of the perpetrator is to hide their presence. So this is the equivalent of a throwaway mobile phone for a, a criminal. And um, uh, they can try to be untraceable, or at least it's difficult to trace uh, where, you know, what, um, what somebody's doing when they're doing this. Uh, mostly this is using unused address space. Occasionally it veers into used address space, in which case, uh, you know, actual traffic could be potential. Yes? <laughs> okay. I will try to speak a little slower for the translators. Um, lo siento. Um, uh, yeah, so occasionally this veers into uh, used address space, in which case there are app, uh, implications for um, uh, actual uh, traffic being uh, misdirected, but uh, often this is just used to uh, hide the presence of um, uh, a perpetrator of some sort. So <clears throat> there's been a, f a handful of news items that have come out in the last year as this issue maybe r uh, rises in profile. Um, last summer there was a story in the uh, um, uh, Dutch press uh, where uh, someone had spotted uh, a, a spamming operation hijacking address space belonging to the uh, Dutch Ministry of Affair, uh, Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, it had gotten uh, so much news coverage that the uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs was called to Parliament and had to answer questions about this. And his questions were along the lines of, "How could you let this happen?" Uh, kind of thing. And you know, in his defense, uh, there's really not much he could do to prevent it. Uh, same is true for everybody. Um, and the uh, um, uh, also, you know, probably on his uh, top priority uh, issues, uh, the hijacking of his unused address space probably isn't uh, one of the very top priorities of the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Nonetheless, this is kind of what uh, what it looked like. So this was came from an uh, organization out of um, Bulgaria called Decision Marketing. Uh, this is a little screenshot from their website that says. Uh, you know, we are email marketing company, and uh, um, which sounds like broken English to us. That's a joke that probably will definitely not translate. Uh, it's not that funny in English either. But uh, uh, anyway, this is the this is the profile, propagation profile of the route. Uh, it was um, for about two weeks. We saw about 40% of our uh, uh, peers carrying this route. Uh, we have a, about 400 uh, different. Um, Full table BGP peers that we uh, draw uh, used to draw BGP data from. And there was about 45 routes involved in this, and um, uh, this one was, you know, clearly a, a spamming uh, operation. Another one that occurred right on the heels of the, la of the Dutch thing was uh, uh, this cantonal IP space. This is a uh, IP space belonging to one of the state or provinces of uh, uh, in Switzerland. Uh, was also hijacked. Uh, spam house was in, uh, instrumental in trying to get this uh, uh, detected and turned off. And in this plot on the right is uh, the x-axis here is time, the y-axis is the percentage of our peering base uh, that, that saw uh, saw the bad route on the left uh, that goes away, uh, and then uh, the good route as the IT department of the state of Freiburg in Switzerland starts announcing, reclaims the usage of this address base. So there's been some pro progression in the technique uh, as we followed this over time. Uh, the new thing seems to be uh, these phony, carefully handcrafted AS paths that look uh, very believable but are nonetheless uh, um, false and uh, uh, fraudulent. I wrote a blog uh, at the beginning of last year uh, called "A Vast World of Internet," uh, of, uh, sorry, "A Vast World of Fraudulent Routing," and in it we uh, talked about uh, um, an activity we saw out of Russia that was announcing, um, you know, among other things, British Telecom address space. Uh, and crafting the AS path so that it appeared like it was coming from one of the British Telecom's uh, autonomous system numbers, either 5400 or 3300. Uh, however, it was exclusively getting routed out of a little provider in Russia. You could run traces, you could see it's actually coming out of Russia. Uh, you know, subsequently, we had discussions with British Telecom and they confirmed this was uh, not legitimate usage of their uh, internet addresses. Um, that seemed to go away in November 2014, and then the following month we saw uh, something very similar reappear, but now coming out of uh, Ukraine. And this is actually ongoing now. Um, and it involves a lot of LAC LACNIC uh, uh, web resources, which is why I thought I'd bring it up in this, this talk uh, to you all. So this is what this 
looks like. Um, this is a route, um, an example, I'm not sure if this particular one is up at the moment, but it has been. Uh, this is a dress space belonging to Brazil Home Shopping uh, Limited. Um, maybe it's a service you've used in the past. Uh, this is uh, this AS. This is kind of an AS path flipped around. Typically, you read these right to left, but in this case, we'll read it left to right. So the origin on the left is the AS of uh, Brazil Home Shopping. So it seems like it would look looks right. Um, uh, the uh, uh, the next two ASs are Brazilian uh, entities, and these also seems seems plausible if you were if you were just doing it, either a matching of just the origin or the upstream, uh, you might miss the fact that uh, these routes are exclusively coming through one uh, entity out of the Ukraine and passed on to Retin, which is a Russian fixed line provider that's got a lot of uh, uh, presence in Ukraine as well. Um, and then this route is also uh, constrained. The propagation is constrained. It's not gl necessarily globally routed. It's mostly to the uh, Russian uh, and Eurasia part of the world. Although there is one major U.S. Uh, content provider that accepts uh, uh, was accepting these routes, um, what's also kind of neat is that when these routes are up, uh, you can uh, you can interact with them. And you can send traces and kind of map out where where traffic's going. Uh, so this is uh, traces from Monsca uh, Moscow and Minsk to uh, what is ostensibly the Brazil home shopping uh, uh, network. However, you know, we're seeing this 20 milliseconds from Moscow and 12 milliseconds from Minsk. This is much more consistent with uh, um, uh, a location somewhere in uh, Ukraine, likely near Kiev, based off of these uh, trace routes we're seeing. And here's a bunch of lists, a list uh, not, not complete by any means of other, uh, these are f uh, routes that were announced uh, illegitimately and then the uh, uh, the origin that they matched up carefully to make it appear as if it was coming from one of these uh, companies, some of which are uh, in attendance today. Um, and you know, this last one is the, uh, uh, the IT department of the Army of Brazil. Uh, they were uh, doing using using their address space, using uh, making it look like it was coming out of uh, their uh, autonomous system number. And the uh, one of the problems is. Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, when I when I talk about this, give this topic to um, security forums, and this is a security track. Uh, that you know, one of the issues that this raises is people will rely a lot on IP addresses for attribution, or just to try to figure out where something's coming, or to help to understand uh, the incidents that they're seeing in their logs. And uh, and so our message uh, to security pract practitioners is to proceed with caution here because. Um, uh, with all of this activity going on, uh, uh, it may um, it may not be uh, who's sending you the traffic that you think it is. Uh, so, you know, one of the blogs we saw where we saw uh, you know, Comcast address space getting announced uh, fraudulently out of Eastern Europe, and uh, um, if someone was to go and look up that IP address out of their security tool or uh, who is or something, it would say it was Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Well, in reality, it was it was nowhere near that, and if they were if you were Comcast and someone's complaining about you know, some bad traffic coming from them, uh, then um, uh, it's not really coming from them. So that's, a, uh, that's an issue with, uh, as if attribution wasn't already hard enough. So <coughs> these, are, these are now some uh, examples of uh, traffic misdirection. Um, it's always hard to be absolutely con uh, conclusive. We don't necessarily get cooperation with, from the parties involved to tell us uh, you know, exactly uh, what was uh, what was intended here? Nonetheless, they're uh, uh, certainly suspicious. But uh, you know, one of the retorts that we get from people uh, is uh, when we bring up this issue is they'll say, "Listen, all my traffic's encrypted, so I'm I'm good to go, and I don't care if uh, the traffic's uh, misdirected." And uh, you know, aside from you know metadata, you know, source and uh, destination stuff will always be still still revealed. Uh, this uh, there is a. Uh, uh, this logjam attack that came out last fall um, suggested there may be a weakness in the Diffie, Diffie Hellman key exchange. And if someone's intercepting uh, uh, traffic during the time of the uh, key exchange, then they would potentially have a, uh, an ability to break the encryption. Now, the highlighted section here says, uh, you know, this is, they would classify this as a threat from a, a state level adversary. That would be the level of resources needed to, to break the encryption. And I'm sure nobody in here has any state level adversaries, but. Um, uh, nonetheless, this is a, um, uh, you know, maybe, the, maybe there is still uh, some reason to be concerned of understanding where, uh, where and how your traffic gets uh, uh, routed through the internet. 
So here's a, uh, an example of, of, uh, that we gave last year of, um, uh, it was a provider in Ukraine who was announcing a bunch of routes from uh, British Telecom. Um, for some reason in this talk, I'm kind of picking on Ukraine and I'm picking on British Telecom. But uh, the, uh, we were able to measure traffic getting uh, misdirected into uh, Ukraine uh, and kind of doing a, you know, what would be a man in the middle. Um, I'm not sure necessarily the purpose of this. At the, at the end of the week of a, bu a bunch of routes that were announced in this way, we saw a big, uh, a bunch of, uh, a bunch of newer routes uh, announced. Uh, one of those was, that caught my eye was the atomic weapons establishment of the UK. And if you're not familiar, this is the organization that actually builds nuclear warheads for uh, the, um, the uh, British uh, military. And so we wrote that blog that got people's attention. Um, I don't know that any sensitive data was sent. Uh, like I, I only know, you know, uh, where the pipes are and where uh, where they where they uh, where they going at the time, um, but um, some journalists kind of extrapolated from there. But maybe I'll take a couple of examples from uh, 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 from this area. So, as you may know, uh, the uh, in the Caribbean, uh, online gambling is a uh, is big business. This is uh, you know billions of dollars. Uh, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, different companies uh, that uh, provide service in this area. Uh, one of those is uh, e-commerce park. This is a, a hosting operation out of Curacao. So we spotted one of the routes uh, that they announced that hosts uh, these online gambling uh, websites was getting hijacked uh, ostensibly by Armintel. This is the incumbent of Armenia. It's hard to know if that actually was truly from them or if that was also uh, fabricated. The um, uh, uh, regardless, the, uh, the the route kind of circulated in the um, uh, in the Russian sphere of the the world, and anybody visiting any of these sites would get um, get redirected. Uh, they would still get to the website, but their path was now a new path. Uh, unfortunately, this got a little bit. Uh, this is a trace route that got a little bit. Um, the formatting got a little messed up. But uh, the one, the normal trace route on the top is just uh, you know from Minsk, Belarus, to e-commerce park in Curacao. Uh, it goes to Bell Telecom, the incumbent there, onto Tealy. Tealy takes it to Miami, hands it off to Columbus, and onto Curacao. That makes sense. That's the that's a normal uh, trace route. And then during this uh, during the time of this hijack, um, we see a new a new hop where it's redirected to Moscow, and then there's no intermediate hops. The next hop is just uh, seen in Curacao. Uh, so I didn't see any MPLS tags or anything. It's hard to know um, what's going on there, but. That would be that would be concerning. I mean, these are organizations uh, are essentially financial institutions. They're not banks, but um, like I said, there's uh, there's reason to for people to target them, and uh, this may have been uh, something that um, so they be should be concerned about. So, um, in uh, as far as um, so in the last year, I, I was helping the New York Times on an online uh, gambling uh, investigation. So I've kind of gotten. Uh, Smart a little bit on uh, on the gam world of, uh, of online gambling. You know, it was outlawed in the United States in 2006, so everything kind of moved offshore. But it, um, the uh, FBI has, uh, in the last few months, if you don't follow it, has been kind of on a rampage of, uh, of a lot of arrests and indictments uh, in this area. Specifically, their interest uh, seem to be targeting uh, resources in Costa Rica and um, uh, and those that uh, have some uh, role in money laundering. Um, so there's been a few news items that have come out. This is you know before the Panama Papers uh, uh, was out. This was this seemed to be a, a growing uh, thing going on. And um, this last inc incident where there was a criminal ring that uh, there was an indictment filed against, and um, uh, it was released at the, uh, at the end of January uh, earlier this year. Uh, this was a criminal organization led by a, bu there was a lot of former athletes in it. The, the leader was a former football player from USC, and there was a former NFL running back that was involved in this. It was a pretty violent group, did uh, all kinds of bad stuff, um, and they uh, had about 22 of these guys charged. Uh, one part of this operation that was illegal gambling uh, through uh, websites in Costa Rica. In fact, if you go back to the, uh, the, the actual indictment uh, you know, filed on January 12th um, that talks about, you know, all activity leading up to and including January 12th. Um, that is kind of interesting because uh, on, on January 12th, we saw AT&T um, accidentally hijack uh, BetCris. If you're not familiar with BetCris, this is kind of the, the granddaddy of uh, online gambling, gambling operations in uh, uh, Costa Rica. And um, this occurred uh, hours before the uh, indictment was filed. 
Um, you know, I think we let these guys know. I don't know uh, if we'll ever hear any confirmation on this. Maybe it was just a mistake. Uh, we can see from our data the traffic is redirected to at and resources in Europe. Um, and, uh, you know, we checked a few things to see if, uh, you know, innocence mistakes happen every day. Uh, maybe that's what this is. The, uh, I looked at the, uh, the various at and ASs, uh, the 2000 series that they use for, uh, over, typically they use it for enterprise clients overseas. Um, they don't kind of come on and off. They're not uh, reactive that way. This isn't normal uh, behavior. This isn't a, uh, a DDoS protection uh, activation either. Um, Speaking of DDoS, DDoS protection, it is uh, Betcris that actually spawned the creation of Prolexic, which many of you uh, probably know. And this uh, was uh, uh, actually docking, uh, this story was told in a book called uh, Fatal System Error uh, about uh, Prolexic and Betcris and caused some legal trouble initially with uh, the, uh, uh, as Prolexic was just getting started as a, uh, as a independent company. So I've talked about a number of concerns uh, that uh, either the you know, fraudulent, uh, fraudulent routing, uh, the traffic misdirection, and to be very honest, there is not any sil silver bullet here. Um, uh, there is you know, limited adoption of RPKI, uh, the cryptographic uh, solution for origin uh, validation that uh, would be helpful. Uh, there is also some pushback on that effort uh, as far as people not being comfortable with an outside entity being having the ability to uh, um, uh, negate or uh, um, you know, reject uh, a, a announcements from, a, from an AS. And um, we support this effort by the Internet Society of uh, Manners, the Mutually Agreed Norms from uh, Routing Security, which is essentially a collection of best practices for routing. Um, and you know, we encourage uh, you know, route monitoring. This is something that we, uh, we are a vendor that does this. Uh, there are others. Um, so just to wrap it up, you know, we have a global system uh, that's, uh, that's directs traffic around the world. This is how we, um, uh, uh, this, this system is, uh, relies on trust and this trust has been, you know, gets, gets violated occasionally, you know, the, uh, whether they are deliberate, uh, there's lots of errors as well that uh, affect performance. It's something that a concern that uh, is high on the minds of us at, at Dyne. Um, this fraudulent routing uh, is happening at a near constant pace. I'm on, a, on an informal group of uh, BGP analysts at some major US content providers that provide major uh, email uh, email services, and we are, are co continuously trading notes uh, on what we're seeing. And uh, it's a cat and mouse game. Things get shut down, and then they pop up somewhere else. And this is uh, um, uh, doesn't seem like it's uh, necessarily getting any better. Uh, for the security practitioners, this attribution based off IP addresses. This is uh, um, not that it can't be done, but typically security practitioners don't have necessarily have uh, any kind of retrospective BGP analysis to understand how something was routed at some time in the past. That's maybe something I do because I'm a professional analyst uh, on this thing, but others, uh, that's not a common uh, common uh, tool in the uh, toolkit. And then there's also uh, uh, products out there doing reputation based off of ASNs, which I've got some concerns about given the fact that we're seeing people uh, falsifying the or ASN origins of some of these routes. and. Um, uh, you know, automatically identifying and filtering that kind of information out is, uh, I think, would be non-trivial. Uh, I haven't, you know, tried to do that. But um, anyway, so in the meantime, uh, monitor your routes. If that's something you're interested in, please uh, come find me. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. All right, thank you. Uh, antes de finalizar la presentación, ¿alguno tiene alguna pregunta para Doc? Sí, Iván. Yeah. Hi. Here, you ah, are so you you mentioned RPKI uh, as a possible solution, but RPKI only uh, validates the origin, yeah. and your problem is uh, AS path. So, That's true. what do you do for that? Um, let's see. Yeah, we the uh, I think right now in the state of the art of route alarming, um, uh, you typically look at you know the origin upstream. Uh, there's some simple things and. Uh, we are. Um, I, I, we have. I, we have prototypes that monitor uh, a full path to identify uh, uh, what would be um, either, either, either leaks or something uh, out of the ordinary based off of our uh, um, uh, knowledge of um, AS relationships. Uh, and so, um, in the meantime, uh, you know, it, 
I think current routing alarms may, may catch it, uh, but I think that the, the state of the art has to kind of improve where we can catch things that are at an arbitrary, you want to be able to catch something that's in our arbitrary location in the AS path, not just origin and upstream, somewhere in there, and I, I, um, I entirely believe that's doable, uh, and you know, we've got, like I said, we've got ways we're, we're catching this now, and uh, hopefully we'll have that you know, in a product that we can share with other people. That's a good point. ¿Alguna otra pregunta? Bueno, ahora sí pido entonces un aplauso para Doc.